Hello everyone, my name is Quad and welcome to another guide that will go over all the resources you can get in the Duviri, at least in the update 33, the Duviri Paradox. There is so many new resources that are actually quite easy to get. Some resources are a bit less common, but you can still get them in massive quantities if you know where to look for them, which I'm going to show you in this video. Before we start, I need to say that this video is divided into sections for each resource, which will make it a bit easier for you guys to look up the section of the resource you actually need. Besides that, the order in which the resources are going to be listed is from more common to less common. Most of the Duviri resources can be found in different areas of the open world. I divided it into four major areas, Upper Island, Middle Island and Lower Island, all of them are encircled on the screen right now. Lower Island is then also divided into two sections, the Lowlands and the Highlands. The difference between the two is snow. If there is snow, then there is Highlands, and if not, then there is Lowlands. But I named the areas of the map just for the sake of this video, so if you're playing with other players, explain to them what you are talking about. But yeah, let's now go over the resources. Kovnik is a little tree you can find pretty much everywhere in the meadows on the Middle Island and the Upper Island. Really, this is the most common resource ever, so you shouldn't have any problem with it. Well, at least with finding it. Agristone is a resource that in my opinion has one of the coolest deposits, but is quite hard to see. It is quite common in the highlands of the Lower Island, but you can also get it on the Middle Island, just in lower quantities. There is a much better way to get it though, together with Sagan Pearls. Sagan Pearls are also quite common, they can appear in normal crates together with Agri Stone everywhere where there are buildings, and you can also find their deposits in the smaller villages around the Duviri. In my opinion, you will not need to farm a lot of these, because they are extremely common. Just be sure to do optional objectives and you will probably destroy a lot of these deposits. Dracroot is quite common in the lowlands on the lower island, but you can also get it in smaller quantities on the middle island. They may be quite hard to see, so I recommend you fly around with your kite and drop down every time you see one. The next resource on the list is Silsila, which is quite easy to get. The resource deposit or plant you can get it from is very rare, but you can easily see it because of its unique feature. You can find it almost everywhere, but I prefer to look for them on the lower island because there is no trees or other obstructions, the area is barren. The extra feature that this flower has is spitting out seeds, which you can pick up with your kite. If you're really unlucky, you can just wait around for the deposit to spit out more silsila and repeat, but the process is quite slow, so only do it if you're really unlucky with the deposit spawns. Yao Shrub can only be found in large quantities in the highlands of the map on the lower island. This is one of the resources you will have to go and look for specifically, because it is so far away from every single objective there is. So yeah, now you know where to get it. Canola Sprout can be found on the upper island, but is quite rare. I marked it on the area of the map because it only spawns there for some reason. But yeah, the resource is very rare, so don't beat yourself up if you don't find a lot of it. Lamentus is an easy resource to farm. The only thing you need to do is get into a fight with the Dax enemies all over the Duviri and there is quite a high chance that they will drop it. I recommend you get a lot of decrees so you can one-shot everything and then just do optional objectives so you can get intrinsics and also Lamentus. The Soma Extract is... Ugh. It is a resource that you will not get a lot of by just playing the game. You need to go into the underground caves to find it. The deposits look like this and they're extremely rare. You will usually find one or two per cave which doesn't help its rarity, so yeah, if you find a hole, jump into it and try to get that Tasoma extract. Enigma Gyrum is a very peculiar resource to farm. You can get it by solving Enigma puzzles, which are optional objectives in the Duviri. What you need to do is find one of the pylons with the three symbols that are all over the place. After you find it, you need to find the symbol canisters somewhere around the Enigma puzzle, and then you need to shoot at them to get the right symbols. And after that, you'll be done. You will get the Enigma Gyrum and resources at the end. I will probably make an in-depth guide how to solve every single Enigma there is, because 
Oh my god, there is a lot of them and every single one of them is a bit different. Some are a bit harder, some are really easy, but yeah, it's, it's just Warframe. The next resource is Ivani, a resource you can find nowhere but the Amphitheater and the Ark Harbor. It is a resource you will need a lot of for the Captura scenes you can get. The deposit looks like a little shrub, which isn't anything special, but yeah, it is quite rare and you will have to go to look for it specifically. The next resource on the list is Rune Marrow, a resource that can only be obtained in the Undercraft, so for this one I recommend playing the circuit. You can still get it by playing the Duviri Experience or the Story Only mode, but in much lower quantities because there are less stages to the Undercraft. The next resource is Pathos Clam. It is a resource you can only get by subduing the Ore of Irm at the end of the story you can play. If you play on the normal difficulty, you will get 10 Pathos Clams, but if you play on the Steel Path difficulty, you will get 15. And the last three resources, Mothang, Nacreous Pebble and Ariet Scale are fishing resources. You can go fishing on the little platforms you can see almost near every pool of water. You just need to kneel down, take control of the mothfish and eat the other fish. After the timer runs out, you will get the resources. I won't go into more specifics because I will make an in-depth guide on fishing sometime later. But yeah, that is pretty much it. If you don't know what these resources are actually used for, it's two things. The first one is buying things from Arcritis. She always appears at the extraction point at the end of every single story mission you play in the Duviri, and she sells arcanes, captura scenes, some owl thing, plant pots, and also a lot of resources that are absolute garbage. So yeah, um, use your bartering skills carefully. And the second reason why you're gonna need a lot of these Duviri resources is the Incarnon Genesis. Now you can actually make some of the worst weapons get an Incarnon form, which will make them extremely powerful, at least supposedly. I myself haven't even tried to play with this at the moment, so I can't share my opinion on it, so yeah, we will see. And that is pretty much it. For the end, I just want to share a few tips with you. My first tip is to go farming during the Fear or Sorrow spirals. The deposits are much more visible during these two spirals, in my opinion at least. Don't even try looking around for resources during the Anger spiral, because everything is far less visible. And Envy is just... It's, it's just ugly, if you ask me, even though the sky is cool. But yeah, to go on, the double resource booster works on most resources, with the exception of Rune Marrow and Pathos Clamps. So these two resources are the hardest to get. And the third tip, try to fly around with Kaith. Kaith will save you so much time if you're not fast enough, because you can see everything from the sky and it is extremely visible. So yeah, with this, I thank you for watching, please like, comment, share or maybe even subscribe and also have a very nice day. Bye guys!